We can show the crowd out there, and uh, hopefully they have interpreted what has happened here just over the last couple seconds and can appreciate the drama that has played out here at the Cape today. Just a remarkable situation with a, with a mission that has been delayed so many times. We were supposed to take off in, in October, and uh, many, many delays, and now uh, here we go again. It's uh, getting close. Very close. All right, we're down to three and a half minutes Fine to go. Surface checks are complete. Discovery's three main engines will be gimbled through a pre-programmed -pro series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. They've got the auxiliary power units started. You can see the main engines moving back and forth. That's one of the last tests. T minus three minutes and counting. Final pressurization of the external tank's liquid oxygen tank is underway. And we're completing purge of the shuttle main engines. So it was last November 5th. TLT, OTC, clear caution, warning memory. That we got almost this far. They started to fill the shuttle's tank. TLT and arc. You know, initially, Discovery was supposed to go in September, then it was October, mm -hmm. then it was November 5th. On November 5th, they started to fill the tank. They had a leak. They Gaseous also oxygen found vent afterwards after they scrubbed the launch, being they cracked away. the fuel tank. From the top of the external tank. Close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Top down work. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon requesting pilot Eric Bowe clear the caution and warning memory system. Now you heard the call. Close and we'll lock your visors. T minus two minutes and flow. counting. Two minutes and counting. TLS is go for ET, LH2, pressure zig. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is being terminated as planned. And in the interim, one of the most difficult problems ever for the shuttle the cracks in the fuel tank is finally run down, is finally solved. The fuel tank is okay. It's been checked out six ways to Sunday. T minus ready to go. one minute, 30 seconds, and counting. And they lost a crew member All along the way. Tim Copra was injured About in a bicycle 90 seconds accident. away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. He was replaced by Steve Bowen, an experienced spacewalker, at practically the last minute just a month ago. T minus one minute. 10 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is now at the proper flight pressure. And now one of the most hair-raising countdowns we've had in a counting. while. And it's the ground only fitting. Sequencer will verify that the three it's hard to launch a space to shuttle. This will be the last the time booster joint for discovery. Are being deactivated the very last time. T-minus time. 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on a it's uh, three onboard fuel cells. And at 31 Coming seconds. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. They'll turn over the countdown to the computers now. TLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. Six lives on the line. 20 seconds. And we're all hoping the Discovery's last flight system is a safe one. Has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine. Go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. Maximum pressure reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery Houston, you are go at throttle up. We'll 
Commander Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hobai as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowe and mission specialist Al Drew and Nicole Stott. That's better. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. A thing of beauty. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour. Its altitude 37 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles. So long, Discovery. Discovery now getting a boost into orbit from its twin orbital maneuvering system engines on either side of the shuttle's tail. These two engines will burn for two minutes and 32 seconds. Your two-engine TAL, uh, we do have updates to your no-com mode boundaries, and we did launch late into pane one, our only pane. The uh, contingency abort boundaries we'll use are in plane plus 230. Let me know when you're ready to copy the new press to ATO and press to Miko. Okay, when you launch a little late, you got to change what you would do if you were to abort, if they have to abort, and try to make an emergency landing. That's what they're talking about now. I would uh, still like to see if we could get out to Gale. Next chance we have, let me know what that is. And at the moment, beautiful. Look at the Earth. Discovery on its way to a perch 220 miles high. Time information due to the later than planned launch. Three minutes and 50 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 4,700 miles an hour. That? that is something that came off and hit the space shuttle, sure, and you you clearly saw it. Boom. Negative return. Bounce off the shuttle a couple of Discovery times. Traveling too high and too fast to return to the uh, Kennedy Space That's going to be a matter of concern. Barrier. Let's mark that. Let's to try to get that replayed if we can. 5,200 miles an hour. It's altitude 62 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 170 miles. All right. It actually probably is not a problem because they're already high enough that there's not enough air uh, to uh, to to move a piece of debris fast enough to hit the shuttle hard enough to damage it. It fluttered. You could see it sort of flutter as it Yeah, it, it didn't go through. very fast. Yeah, exactly. It didn't go very fast. And that means uh, minutes, 45 seconds it, we can hope that it didn't do any damage. But if it did do damage, that's a big deal. It's right at about 4 now minutes, 10 PSC seconds into launch. Miles. And so we got to try to turn that around and replay that for you, if possible. Jones and his team continue to monitor the progress of Discovery's flight. Uh, All systems are continuing to perform as expected. After main engine cutoff, it's an eight and a half minute climb for Discovery into the blackness and the vacuum of space with the bright blue earth below. You are watching live a camera mounted on the fuel tank of Discovery. Discovery, you are pressed to ATO. As we accelerate together to a speed nine times faster than a rifle bullet. Capcom Charlie Hobai indicating that Discovery has enough energy to make it to a lower than planned orbit should one engine fail at this point. However, all three engines continue to burn as expected. If you saw... Single engine ops three. If you saw the piece of debris hit, um, typically you're only concerned if some debris hits in about the first two minutes, roughly. Discovery's engines are now, now struggling to roll the shuttle to a heads-up position to get better communication with NASA's tracking satellites. So 180-degree kind of spiral or spin for the shuttle. Discovery, your single-engine Zaragoza 104. Isn't that something? Single-engine Zaragoza 104. 
Discovery can now make it to emergency landing sites in Europe should two engines fail at this point, but the flight continues to go well. Six minutes, 24 seconds into the flight, the shuttle traveling 9,800 miles an hour. It's altitude 67 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 447 miles. Amigo, BIM for you, nominal shutdown on all three, and Pinto, you'll be go for the plus X and go for the pitch. If we can get to it in the next two minutes, uh, I was very interested in something that uh, the launch director, Mike Leinbach, had to say. A call from Capcom, Charlie Hobart, indicating that Commander Steve Discovery. Lindsay has a go to press to main engine cutoff as expected in about a minute and a half. Talking about all the thousands of people who truly love the space shuttles, especially this one, the hardest working press. orbiter, 38, now 39 missions, and that's it. Although I have to, uh, as an aside, Seven tell you that the United Space Alliance, the company that prepares the shuttles for launch, wants to keep launching them. Beginning in 2013, twice a year, for a lot less than NASA launches them. Keep two shuttles around, continue to launch them. That's a proposal that's out there on the table. I don't think it's too likely to be accepted by the government. Shuttle traveling 14,000 miles an hour. 14,000 miles an hour. And we're a little over 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff. Less than 30 seconds to go in Discovery's powered flight. We're coming up on main engine cutoff. The fuel tank held, cracks, the leaks. They said they were fixed, and they are fixed. The crew is safe as far as we know. Engine cutoff confirmed. Space Shuttle Discovery now in space. There we go. External tank separation confirmed. Isn't that beautiful? The thrusters fire. The tank will tumble into the ocean. Commander Steve Lindsay will steer the shuttle up to the uh, forward portion of the external tank so that the umbilical well camera can capture some images of it. Discovery, we saw nominal MECO, ohms one not required. Preliminary TIG for ohms two, 3730. Welcome to you and your veteran crew back to space. Copy, uh, no ohms one required, 3730. Just an amazing sight here at Kennedy Space Center this afternoon, and you want to talk about some drama.